Princess Mahachakri Sirindon of Thailand launched the Chinese New Year Festival in Yawarat area, Bangkok's Chinatown, at its Gateway Arch. The princess arrived in a red Chinese-styled outfit at Wat Trimid Witayaram Wara Wihan Temple at 4.15 p.m. on January 31st. She worshipped the world's biggest gold and main Buddha image of the temple. Then she boarded a tram to the Gateway Arch at the Odeon Roundabout. Bangkok Governor Mr. Sukumbana Paribat, festival organizers, and a large number of local people welcomed the princess. The princess opened the festival by activating the movement of a horse model that symbolizes movements toward success. Then the princess boarded the tram to Sentara Central Station Hotel to have dinner. The management of the hotel served auspicious dishes, including fried prawns, stir-fried sable fish, roast scallop, steamed bird's nest and fish, stir-fried rice, tofu in sauce on abalone, and black sesame dumplings with almond cream. Then the princess opened a new branch of Bangkok Hospital in Yawarat and worshipped a Guanyin image at Tian Fa Foundation Hospital, where she also received a five-inch tall gold horse image that symbolizes the year of the horse this year. The princess visited shops of the royalty and wrote Chinese letters meaning a trade center. The princess also worshipped deities at the two-century-old Guan Yu Shrine and Wat Leng Nei Yi Temple. Local shrines are crowded with worshippers who pray for their good luck and the well-being of their majesties, the king and the queen. Bangkok's Chinatown is decorated with thousands of Chinese lanterns and the Chinese New Year Festival was concluded at midnight on February 1st. Four individuals are conferred Prince Mahidol Awards of Thailand upon their outstanding and exemplary contributions to the advancement of the world's medical and public health services. Her Royal Highness Princess Mahachakri Serindon presided over the presentation ceremony of the Prince Mahidol Award 2013 at the Chakri Throne Hall. And the first laureate in the field of medicine is Dr. David D. Ho, a leader in HIV AIDS research who pioneered the highly active antiretroviral therapy or HAART treatment for HIV infected patients. He is director and CEO of the Aaron Diamond AIDS Research Center in New York. Second, Dr. Anthony Fauci has made influential contributions to the understanding of how HIV destroys the body's defenses, leading to the progression to AIDS. He is currently director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, NIAID, the U.S. National Institute of Health. The approach taken by Professor David D. Ho and Dr. Anthony Fauci has been widely embraced and set a new standard for HIV-AIDS patient treatment, changing AIDS from a lethal, untreatable disease to a chronic one and saving millions of lives throughout the world. In the field of public health, the award goes to Professor Peter Piot, Director of the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, United Kingdom, and former Executive Director of UNAIDS Kingdom of Belgium. He has played a major role in raising global HIV-AIDS awareness and promoted the inclusion of HIV-AIDS prevention in national development agendas among politicians, businessmen, scientists, and spiritual leaders. Another laureate in the field of public health is Dr. Jim Yong Kim, former director of the WHO's HIV AIDS department, had worked to promote universal access to antiretrovirals while serving as director of the WHO's HIV AIDS department. The efforts of Professor Peter Piot and Dr. Jim Yong Kim have made HIV AIDS treatment and prevention a global agenda, enabling faster, more comprehensive treatment that has served millions of lives and benefited people's health throughout the world. In the past 22 years, 64 individuals, groups of individuals and institutions had received the Prince Mahidol Award. This year, there are a total of 64 nominations from 28 countries. The Prince Mahidol Award Foundation was established in 1992 by the royal permission of His Majesty, the King Bumibol Adul Yadet, in commemoration of the centenary birthday anniversary of His Royal Highness Prince Mahidol of Songkla, the father of modern medicine and public health of Thailand. Flyboarding, a futuristic new water sport, has arrived in Cambodia 
offering visitors the chance to defy gravity by diving and soaring through the waves. The technology was developed by a French ski champion in 2011, but now everyone can get a taste of the action. Dipping, diving and soaring, this is flyboarding. Using these high-pressure water jets, the sport sees participants propelled through the surf and high into the air before plunging once again under the waves. In Cambodia, this new water sport was introduced recently by French Cambodian brothers Florian and Jonathan T. The technology was developed in 2011 by French jet ski champion Frankie Zapata and works quite simply. Two U-shaped water jets are fed through an 18-meter hose by a nearby jet ski, which then provide the thrust. Handheld water jets are also available to provide extra balance, but they can restrict freedom of movement. So far, Florian and his brother Jonathan's attempts to show off the sport have mostly consisted of putting on demonstrations, flying and diving a few dozen meters off the beach, leaving onlookers bemused and curious. Located here on Sihanoukville's Otres Beach and operating under the moniker Flyboard Cambodia, the brothers offer beginner to advanced lessons with their flyboard setup imported from Thailand. Participants start out with a brief lesson on shore before wading out to the jet ski and hooking themselves into the large flyboard boots. Most newcomers start out as anything but graceful, but after a few minutes, most end up soaring high above the spray. Some degree of physical fitness is recommended, but Florian says almost anyone can do it. Brothers Chai and Long Duong from Phnom Penh are here having a taste of flyboarding, and they certainly recommend it. At 50 US dollars for 15 minutes, flyboarding in Cambodia isn't cheap, but it is a thrill. Cambodians on February 5th held a bus service trial in Phnom Penh in the hopes that the new public transport system will help ease traffic jams in the city. Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, helped with the test run of 10 buses, which will last a month. If successful, the bus route will mark the first step in establishing a long overdue public transit system to alleviate Phnom Penh's increasing traffic congestion. Everybody uh, uh, complaining about the traffic uh, jams, you know. So if uh, 30 persons move by the private cars, need uh, 30 uh, private cars. But uh, if it's a bus, just only one. So we can, we can uh, effectively use uh, road space more. Local media said the daily service, which will cost passengers 1,500 riyal for a flat rate single ticket, will run from 5.30 a.m. until 8.30 p.m. from the Troy Changva Old Stadium runabout to Chaba Ampov, stopping 36 times along the way. Students also said the bus service is more convenient and cheaper than other transportation services. JICA initially brought the bus service project to Cambodia in 2001, but it was unsuccessful because residents still preferred using their own cars and motorbikes. A theater group in Manila looks to show the lives of people living and coping with floods through a light-hearted musical. The name of the Filipino rock musical, Rock of Ages, was inspired by American Broadway musical and movie Rock of Ages and is about a community hit by floods. The setting mirrors Manila slums, where people are forced to deal with routine inundations brought by the typhoons and poor sewage systems. The plot centers on Eileen, daughter of a shoemaker in their impoverished village, who dreams of helping her father out by becoming a YouTube sensation, being featured in her favorite American talk show, Ellen, and making money in the process. When something bad happens, it happens. You, how do you move on forward? And forward is about a very strong spirit, a spirit that can say, shrug off stuff and say, I'll move forward. The show highlights the conditions of flooded communities, but its creators were careful not to spark raw emotions due to the recent typhoon Haiyan, which killed thousands in the central Philippines last year. 
Songs from the popular local rock band, Aegis, was used to balance the seriousness content by taking their famous love and heartbreak songs as running gags to lighten the mood without diverting from the main theme of the story. Screenplay writer Lisa Maktoto says the story aims to send a message that goes beyond the traditional resiliency. Resilience is an important thing because we, we hold on to that, but we go beyond I think we have to go beyond resiliency. Association, a social advocacy group behind a musical, uses their productions to generate discussions among the audiences, which are often students and teachers. The theater group hopes that Rock of Ages will spark renewed talks on disaster mitigation in the Philippines, which sees an average 20 typhoons each year. The musical will run until March 9th. Brunei Darussalam is introducing a new bill payment system. The system called ePayment Gateway, or EPG, will connect ministries and departments with four financial institutions to provide secure online payment transactions for the public and automated payment reporting to the Treasury Department. Officiating at the launch of the new system was the acting Second Minister of Finance at the Prime Minister's office, Datu Paduka Awang Haji Bahrain. The system will connect three government billers, namely the Department of Electrical Services, the Postal Services, and the Revenue Division of the Ministry of Finance with four financial institutions. The system has been developed for the Ministry of Finance by a consortium of Telbrew, a system integrator, and Card Access Services, one of Australia's leading payment gateway developers. It has been designed to be extremely robust and secure, using global standards of security to ensure that payment information is safe. The payment gateway service operator, under the management of Treasury Department, will continue to sign up more government agencies to the EPG until all government payments are handled through the system. The National Research Foundation, NRF, recently launched a 100 million Singapore dollars grant to help local universities to build their research strengths and deepen their competencies. This grant will allow universities to organize their research programs and infrastructure across departments and faculties to help leading researchers in areas like advanced materials. This was announced by Health Minister Gan Kim Yong at the second Global Young Scientist Summit at One North. Mr. Gan said that while Singapore has built up a suit of biomedical research capabilities, it still has to engage with the rest of the world.